What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for November 23rd, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Saturday edition of the podcast. Before we get into the episode, some quick housekeeping notes. And as I always tell you, I like to make sure everything is accurate and 100%. So I did a little bit more digging yesterday on the whole greasy meal, trying to find out if there's anybody who won uh, championships in two of the major sports. Still have not been able to track down anyone who's won a World Series as well as an NFL championship as Greasy did. He did one as a player, one as a coach. I did, however, find two guys that won multiple championships in different leagues, in different sports as players. Otto Graham obviously won an NFL championship, also won an NBL championship, which the NBL is the precursor to the NBA. So Otto Graham won in basketball and football. And then Gene Conley also won a World Series as well as an NBA championship with the Celtics. So those were the only two guys I was able to find. Uh, so the fact that Greasy Neal won a World Series as well as a Super Bowl, that's what I'm going with. I could not find anyone. Again, if you find somebody out there, let me know. Also, yesterday when we were doing our thankful for A.J. Brown, I mentioned that uh, he talks about his daughter and wanting his kids to to have a stable place to, to grow. He even wears the pink cleats so his daughter can identify him on TV. I did fail to mention that A.J. also does have a son. Didn't want to leave that out there. But the fact remains, he's one of those guys that we are truly thankful for. So again, just want to make sure I'm getting everything accurate Sometimes I leave things out. Sometimes I say the wrong thing. So that is the updates from yesterday. Be sure to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont, on Twitter and TikTok, on Instagram, at Philly Jimbo. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Spread the word. Let's continue to grow this thing. We're about halfway through the gift card drive portion of our fundraiser this year. We have blown last year's total out of the water. Let's keep that coming. Any little bit helps, $5, $10, whatever you can give. Let's help make some holiday magic for our friends and neighbors, courtesy of the Maddie and Dixon Community Cupboard. Everything you need is in the description to make that happen. Sixers were fun last night. No Joe. uh, I guess during the shoot-around, he had some swelling in his knee, so they held him out. I don't know, but whatever. The game was fun. I do... Again, I don't think for everything, but I do dig the blue court they're using for the NBA Cup. But what a fun game against the Nets, 113-98. Tyrese Maxey and Jarrett McCain are, like, I think we saw what our future is going to be last night. Jarrett McCain had 30, Tyrese Maxey had 26, and it was just fun. They made some big shots down the stretch. Wasn't a big fan of, I guess, Comcast had, uh, or NBC Sports Philly, but... It was a weird overhead camera angle on some of the shots. It was just weird watching it. Uh, Not a fan of that, but what a fun game. Always good to see the Sixers win. They are back at home tomorrow against the Clippers. Paul George has already been ruled out. No word on if Joe is going to play or not, but we'll welcome our old pal James Harden back to the Wells Fargo Center. But I'm telling you, Jarrett McCain, Tyrese Maxey, that is the backcourt of the future. What they, They're fun to watch, both of them. Uh, so it, it, that's the little glimmer of hope I guess we have right now with the Sixers. But I'll take it. 113-98 win over the Nets. Flyers are in action today against the Blackhawks at 1 down at the Wells Fargo Center. This should be a, a good spot for get-right game for them. Hopefully that happens and they come out with some energy. Uh, it seems like they, they always have that one little league period. So hopefully they can control that today. All right. Let's get into a recap of the question of the day as we go into our Eagles news. I asked you yesterday, is this a trap game? 80% of you said yes. Uh, I, I, it has all the makings of a trap game. But again, I don't necessarily think they're going to fall into the trap. Uh, just the way Sirianni has had them playing. So as always, thank you for participating in the question of the day. There will be another one later in the show. Uh, quick programming note. Tomorrow we'll have our three keys to the game as well as give our official pick. So stay tuned for that. 
Eagles will be wearing the all-white uniforms uh, out in L.A., white jerseys, white pants, nice clean look. I think it would be cool if they had the, the black helmets. I think they're just wearing the normal green ones, but oh well. Devontae has officially been ruled out due to his hamstring injury. It definitely is going to hurt the offense somewhat. I think you, you got to see somebody like Dallas Goddard or Jahan Dotson step up. But it's better to rest that hamstring now. Like the soft tissue injuries, just uh, that is concerning. So take all the time you need Devontae to get back. And it, it's definitely been a quiet week on the Eagles front. And I'm hoping that means that's because they're so focused. Uh, obviously, we were focused so much on the Sixers this week. Uh, but I do think they're going to come out focused. A little bit of NFC East news. And I'm just going to flat out say it, no. No, no, no. Uh, Daniel Jones has been officially cut by the Giants, and I saw a lot of people saying, hey, maybe we cut Kenny Pickett and bring in Daniel Jones. No. I've seen enough Daniel Jones to know you, you don't want that losing culture coming in. Just no. Forget about it. I think uh, the best thing would be if he goes to Dallas and – somehow plays on Thanksgiving and beats the Giants. But no, I don't I don't want any parts of Daniel Jones. It's kind of one of the, it's not necessarily a vibes thing like we did with the the Phillies, but no. Just no. Uh but again, quiet week uh, other than the injury news to Devontae. Does look like Britt Covey is on track to come back, which will be new or uh, music to Vic Fangio's ears. Uh, if he's going to start returning punts. So let's let's hope that the, the news cycle continues to be relatively peaceful heading into tomorrow night's game. All right, today we are going to stick with the Eagles, and we're going to go back to 1989. And on this day in 1989, it was Bounty Bowl. The Eagles took on the Cowboys down at Texas Stadium on Thanksgiving. The Eagles thumped the Cowboys 27 to nothing. This was during Troy Aikman's rookie year, so the, the blowout was kind of expected. Chris Carter had two touchdowns. Chris or Keith Byers had 90 uh, receiving yards and a rushing touchdown. The defense sacked Aikman two times, intercepted him three times, also forced two fumbles. But it was the post-game fireworks that is the story from this one. Uh, Buddy Ryan earlier in the season cut kicker Luis Dejas just for being not sharp. And obviously, Luis then went. This was a weird situation. So, Luis and Dejas went from the Eagles to the Cowboys. Roger Ruzak went from the Cowboys to the Eagles. So, essentially, they traded kickers. Uh, but post game, Luis and Dejas said Buddy put a bounty for taking him out, as well as Troy Aikman. And if you look at the game, Jesse Small hammered Luis and Dejas on a kickoff. There was a point in time where Britt Hager tackled Troy Aikman after the, the, the whistle had blown, led to a brawl. Mike Pitts got ejected. Uh, Kevin Gogan and um, who was it? Jerome Brown were, were squaring up, ready to throw fist. Um, and it just was a typical Eagles Cowboys hatred during that time. Zendejas did say that Buddy Ryan used to give out big big play or big hits awards in the locker room after games. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, if you remember, was pissed off about it. Uh, his team was terrible and uh, just was not happy. He said, I have no respect for the way they played the game. He would have said something to Buddy, but he took his fat rear end into the dressing room before he had a chance to talk to him. Buddy, in true Buddy fashion, said, uh, I resent that. I lost a couple pounds. I thought I was looking good. And it just was one of those uh, typical Buddy Ryan. And it wasn't the first time that the Eagles that season had been accused of putting bounty on bounties on players. Buddy, to his credit, said, why would I put a bounty on the kicker? He's terrible. Wouldn't I want him to continue to be terrible? Uh, which actually is a good point. Uh, but I don't know. Bounty Bowl, this was sort of the peak of the the Eagles' domination of Dallas back then. Uh, if you remember, after the Tom Landry ran up the score with his regular players against Buddy Ryan's replacement players during the strike, uh, the Cowboys would not beat the Eagles again until week 16, 16 of 1991. But Bounty Bowl 
was on this day back in 1989. Eagles beat the Cowboys 27 to nothing. Uh, allegedly, bounties were put on Luis Zendejas and Troy Aikman. Uh, Troy Aikman kind of downplayed it. Jimmy Johnson was furious, and Buddy Ryan just being Buddy. Uh, they would play again two weeks later in another. And as much as the NFL didn't want to to really hype up this, they dubbed it as Bounty Bowl 2. So uh, NFL, even back then, was, was all about making money. But on this day in 1989, Bounty Bowl happened. The Eagles-Cowboys down in Texas on Thanksgiving Day. 27 nothing. They just dominate it. Uh, Buddy Ryan with one of the best quotes, though. Uh, I thought I lost a few pounds. I thought I was looking good. I resent that. But good old Buddy. Uh, couldn't win a, a playoff game, but gave us a lot of good memories throughout his career here. Which that leads us into what are we thankful for today? And today, I'm thankful for the Big Five. Today is the birthday of the Big Five. It was announced this day back in 1954. That the Big Five would form LaSalle, St. Joe's, Villanova, Penn, and Temple uh, as a way to sort of help Penn with the upkeep of the Palestra, as well as showcase Philly basketball. Uh, back in the day, during this time period, Philly basketball or Philadelphia was the mecca of college basketball. Uh, from 1954 to 1958, Temple and LaSalle were both in the Final Four two times each. And the Big Five really, to me, was all about the rivalries, or is all about the rivalries. I caught the tail end of the the heyday of the Big Five, but there was always something special about playing uh, when Temple played LaSalle or St. Joe's or Villanova or even Penn, for that matter, because Fran Dunphy had them back when I was in college. They were uh, a relative uh, regular in the NCAA tournament and just always a tough out. Uh, but then over the course of time, the, the, the in, uh, not invention, but when, when conference play started to become important, and even now to this day, the state of college sports uh, became not as important. Uh, a lot of people, right or wrong, blame Raleigh Massimino for this. Uh, there was some limitations with the amount of games teams could schedule. He said it was hard to fit in all their other non-conference games as well as conference play. They would always play out in Maui in the Maui Invitational. So it was hard for Villanova to, to really schedule that. And even when they did play, he was like it hurt their tournament chances due to rankings and things like that. Um, but I, it, right or wrong, Raleigh and Villanova kind of get the blame for ending the Big Five. But I think it was inevitable anyway because of just the way the landscape sort of changed and the the non-conference schedule. You got to play a tough non-conference schedule, and it's RP, back then it was RPI and things like that. But during its heyday, the Big Five was outstanding, one of the great things, and I I, I always loved it. Like I said, there was something about those St. Joe's Temple. St. Joe's, Nova, uh, Temple, LaSalle, uh, just that really uh, you kind of got a little bit more amped up for the games against the city rivals. Now, for Temple, it was different because they were in the same conference with LaSalle and St. Joe's, so they were conference games as well. But I'm thankful for the Big Five. Last year, we talked about they did the, the Big Five Classic where they brought – Drexel wins, so it's technically the Big Six. They played some pod games to help with the scheduling and things like that, culminating with the triple header uh, the weekend of, I think it's December 7th this year, uh, where the all, all six teams will play a triple header down at the Wells Fargo Center. Not the same as it was back in its heyday in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, even into the 80s, uh, but there's still something to me. I get a little nostalgic with it. I'm a huge college basketball guy anyway. So today, I'm thankful for the Big Five, even though it's not quite the same as it was. But we have some great memories. Uh, and there was nothing like those Big Five games back even into the 90s when it was Temple LaSalle, Temple St. Joe's, uh, Goon Gate, St. Joe's Nova, Temple Nova. Lots of fun. We talked about the Temple Nova game at midnight the other night. So today, we're thankful for the Big Five, even though it's a little it looks a little different today than it did on this day back in 1954 when it was announced that it was going to be formed. 
But that leads me to today's question of the day. I'm really old school with it, not quite as old school as some of the the old uh, guys that, that grew up with the original Big Five. But does the Big Five matter today? 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. Personally, I think with the landscape of college sports having those rivalries, I, I, I do think it matters, maybe not to the extent that it did uh, previously, but I think it still matters. I think the guys get up for the, the Philly games. But what do you think? Does the Big Five matter today? 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. All in honor of the Big Five, which we're thankful for today because as we head into Thanksgiving, we're talking about what we're thankful for for Philly sports in honor of our food and gift drive for uh, benefiting the Maddie Ann Dixon Community Cover. All of that information is in the description. But does the Big Five matter today? I do. I, I really do think it matters to to a certain point. Not quite as much as before, but I, I think it's still fun and it does matter. On this day in 1989, Eagles beat the Cowboys on Thanksgiving down in Texas in Bounty Bowl, where Buddy Ryan allegedly put bounties on Luis Endejas and Troy Aikman as the fights broke out. It just was a very chippy game, as we like to say. We'll have more on the Flyers tomorrow. Three keys to the Eagles' victory tomorrow as well. Key Bank, car dealerships, hit me up. I'm I'm, I'm available for sponsorship. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for November 23rd, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Saturday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.